Good morning everybody, it's Rob Holman with Northwest Fishing Reports. Today we're out fishing the Fall Chinook Salmon Run on the Columbia River. We're right off the mouth of the Deschutes, located somewhere between the Dalles and Biggs. Is that right, Brianna? Yeah. Yep. And that's Brianna Bruce, everyone, well-known Puget Sound area guide out here for Ed Iman's Fish Camp, an annual event that brings together a lot of different companies, guides, and media. We're participating a little bit this morning, and the technique, and we'll have Brianna go into this in depth, is hover fishing. It's uh, vertical fishing with eggs. Keep watching. We got a fun show for you. Out early in the morning, gonna go out and cast away all these waters here for the big boys. And we all come out to play. It's a northwestern way. Northwest fishing reports. Two ounce lead, two, two hooks, and we're running a two odd on top, Gamagatsu octopus, and a one odd on the bottom. And then we're throwing a chunk of eggs on there, and we just vertically fish it. Well, here's one rod ready to go, and I'll get another one set up. Yeah. <laughs> We want to have it vertically just suspended and easy that they walk up or they walk up, swim up and take a nibble. Um, but if you get too close to the bottom, a lot of times you'll catch a sturgeon. So we want to stay up off the bottom to stay out of the sturgeon. Do you feel anything different? Set the hook. We've got lots of eggs on the boat, so don't be shy about needing more eggs. Yep. I'd rather have you set on something that's not a fish than miss a fish because you didn't set. Dave well, Gretzky said you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Absolutely. Chinook on the Columbia here. Hover fishing, so dropping the eggs down to about 25 feet, I think is what this guy was at. And then you reel up a couple feet, so you're just off the bottom. So they're attacking it from the bottom. So when he came up and I saw that bounce, you really gotta set the hook or he's gonna get off. A little different than trolling where they're hitting it from the side angle. We're using 15 pound leaders, so we're gonna play them out. Oh, <laughs> that's a good fish. 15. I think that's a good fish, Greg? I think that's a good fish. I don't want to tighten you down too much. Yeah. Yeah. No more than that. Oh. <laughs> Got 
gosh, these are fun fish to, man, look at that. They're... Oh, nice fish, Louie. Nice fish. That's a good one. Neutral. Oops, sorry. Don't get too excited. Oh yeah. There we go. Nice. All right. That's Woo. a good one. Oh, oh. That's a beauty. Yes, it is. Oh. Not enough. There we go. That was a good one. Woo. <laughs> Ooh. Nice yeah. work. That's a great fish. So we got a wild fall Chinook out here at the mouth of the Deschutes. Beautiful fish. That would put up a good fight, huh? Oh yeah, absolutely. And here we can keep wilder hatchery fish. So this one's going in the kill bag. Awesome. So Those. am I done for today? So we can still party fish. If you hook another fish, you can continue to keep jacks, but if you hook another fish, it will just hand it off to someone else. All right. Okay. How so, do these cut, Bree? These cut beautiful. They're still really nice. They're in great shape up here. We're not too far up the Columbia yet, and they're really beautiful, nice, nice meat. Eat fantastic. It's a beautiful fish. Thank you, Bree. You're welcome. So what do you think's going on, Bree? I think we got a sturgeon on. It just kind of grabbed it and swam off. So we're gonna go chase it around a little bit and see if it is. I think it's a big sturgeon. We've seen a few of them popping up around. Yeah, it might be that one that's been spy hopping and seeing what we're up to. Is it coming? Yeah. Come on, baby. Come on. I think it's a big sturgeon. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Like a six foot sturgeon, you could pick up with that pod. Come on. Yeah, I just felt a little All right. 60 feet. Come on. It's up to 60. Uh, there. Yep, it was a sturgeon. Good fight, Hillary. Nah. I think that was a really big sturgeon. Anything like a six foot sturgeon, we'd be able to pick up with that rod pretty easily. And that one stayed down real low and it bubbled a couple times and that was a big fish. on some more. Yep, and same spot Hillary pulled hers out of. This is a really nice hole. It goes from about 19 feet, drops down into 27, and those fish are coming up and they just sit right in this hole. That thing seems to be fighting it pretty good. Yeah, it seems to be. That's a good one. Good. <laughs> there we go. Nice work, Bill. Ooh. Nice work. All right. <laughs> Extra line out. Oh, yeah. Get it in the boat. Look how bright that one is. Beautiful fish, Bill. Whoa. You all right? Yeah. All right. Do it again. Absolutely. <laughs> Bill yeah. produces these beautiful, fantastic, my very favorite rod holder. One of my very favorite fishing products. Well, a rod holder is a pretty uh, fundamental piece of equipment. Yes. You can take them for granted, but a good one's going to make the difference. They really do, and these are these rod holders are fantastic for every fishery, but I really love them for troll fishing because I can when I'm running plugs, I can point my rod straight down, have my tip right at the water surface, and they're not going to come out until I want them to. And they're pretty simple to use. Once you kind of understand the basic concept of them, they're simple to use, they hold onto the rod. You don't have to worry about your rod falling in the water when you get a fish that hits it. They're really great. 
she she understands the product pretty good, Bill. Yeah, she does. Uh, she she does real well with it, evidently. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have said it better yourself, huh? No, I couldn't. <laughs> what a great fish! It's a nice yeah, one. It is. It's another wild fish. Super bright. This one I'd say probably came up last night and just got to this point in the river. Sweet. Beautiful. And what brand are those? Fulbies. The Fulbies? Yeah. Yep. Fulby Rod Holders, Brianna Bruce. Yeah. We got a hook up. It's so interesting this technique. Because those fish are right under the boat. And just a little tick, tick, tick. And then fish on and, and, and they're Chinook. They're hot, feisty fish coming up river. Just a hoot. If you look around, there's a lot, a lot of boats out here too. It's no secret. They're just running out on me. Brianna, can you tell the folks at home a little bit about the gear we're using? So we've got a little mishmash of stuff today. Um, we're using some Lamaglass back bouncers. Really for this fishery, a shorter rod is a lot more usable. Um, being as this isn't really my regular spot to fish, I kind of mishmash some rods together, but these Lamaglass back bouncers are fantastic. We're running all Dakota 300 reels. Power Pro braid, 50 pound Power Pro. Which is interesting, it's got some high vis elements there, right? Yeah, this one's a depth counter, so every two feet is a different color. So you notice those raw, uh, those reels don't have line counters on them, and that way you can still count out your depth with that depth counter line. Right. We're using 15 pound Seaguar fluorocarbon leaders today, and I've really moved to fluorocarbon on pretty much all of my leaders for all my fisheries. I really like it. It's a lot more abrasion resistant. Fish don't see it, it's non-UV reactive. You know, if you leave the leaders on your rods and they sit out for the night and they're in the sun a little bit, they don't get brittle like monofilament does. It's neutrally buoyant. There's I really appreciate you talking because I really got nothing to say right now. Wow, it's nice. It's going under. Motor. Yeah, it's a nice fish, I think. Columbia River endorsement, they actually allowed us to use barbed hooks again. So it's helped us land more fish. If we can get a good hook set on them, it's helped us land a lot more. So you're gonna reel all the way down to the ledge and real easy pick up. If he wants to take off, let him go. Turn in, let him go. Reel back down to the ledge. Take our time. This is the point where a lot of people. There we go. In the net. Nice fish. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Yeah. All right. Pretty Smoking. good. Yeah. Love that fish. What a fight. Gorgeous. Another really bright fish. That's another fresh fish in this section of the river today. Also a wild. Yeah, most of these fish we've been catching this week are wild. And you were saying the regulation here is six fish, but only one of them can be an adult. Correct. Wild or hatchery, coho or chinook. Yep. The rest are, uh, rest of that limit can be used with jacks, but at this point, not a lot of jacks showing. We haven't seen a whole lot of jacks out. Most of them have been adult fish, and most of them have been these wild, nice big chinook. All right, I love it. Hey, we'll be back with more Northwest Fishing Reports right after this.
It's tips and trips, new techniques and locations to expand your fishing horizons. A lot of people ask me how to tie braided line to fluorocarbon line. So basically I use what they call an Alberto knot. You take your fluorocarbon line and you double it. And you take your braided line and always use your braided line to wrap around your fluorocarbon. So you go up out of the hole, pull it tight, and then wrap it seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Once you wrap it seven times, take your fingers and pinch at the end so you can hold it. Now you want to come right back six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now you want to take your tag in on your braid and go back through the hole the same way you went in. So it basically is almost like the old square knot. So we went in this way, so we're going to come back out the bottom to the top. And so it kind of, they go together the same way. Then you wet really good so it doesn't burn. Pull all your lines and then pull your two main lines. And there you have it. Very small, nice, compact knot that goes right through your eyelets very easily. Then you just take and clip off your two tag ends and you're done. Like to run two hooks so see here how it's just in the flesh a lot of times that'll pull out if you just have one hook down here it's in bone that hook probably wouldn't have come out but very likely that top hook would have come out if we fought them a little bit longer that's why we always run two hooks and that's a hatchery so see there it doesn't have an adipose that's how we tell that it's a hatchery before they release them from the hatchery they clip that adipose fin when they're about three to five inches and then they let them go and they go out to the ocean and they're normal fish and they come back to the river the same way the wild fish do they just started life in a pond what you get used to. Yeah, it sure is. There she it is. uses left-handed reels. So I'm pretty fish. ambidextrous when it comes to reels. Awesome. Nice. Now we bring these all the way in. Bring them all the way in, yep. Right on the floor. There it is. Thank you, Larry. <laughs> Teamwork. Exactly. All right. And that's a bow limit. That's a boat limit. We're done for the day. God, just Sweet. in time, yeah. too, because it's like 5 to 12. Larry's got to go in at noon, so we timed it perfect. Hey, just, <laughs> just the way we scripted it, right? It <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, guys. Oh, thank you. Fantastic day. How about we uh, talk? get back to the dock and talk a little bit? Absolutely. Tell these folks a little bit about your tackle setup. and We'll go over everything. Perfect. All right. Nice. <laughs> It's got to be the yeah. parade. Yeah. Elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist. It was a fantastic day out on the water today. Brianna, what a blast. Thanks for coming out. It was a great time. Found some amazing fish. It's a fun fishery. 
Hey folks, I know you don't do this fishery, but you do a lot of stuff in the Puget Sound. You do lakes, rivers, saltwater. Pretty much, if it swims in Washington, I do it other than tuna. Sure, sure. <laughs> if they want to get a hold of you, maybe do a trip. How do they do that? LiveInLifeAdventures.com on the website. Facebook, Livin' Life Adventures. Get a hold of me, 206-714-2112, or go fish at livinlifeadventures.com for an email. Everybody, it was a fun time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the water and online. That's a bite. swing and a miss. Probably gonna need new eggs after that one. There's Bree looked at the camera and go, and now back to fishing. And now, back to fishing. Why don't you get your fish? Head in? No, we're gonna fill this boat you up. You want a picture, Travis? <laughs> we lost one. Rob lost one. Here you go, Rob. Wait, Rob? And he missed one. Why whiskey Rob? <laughs> <laughs> That was the biggest. Woo! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the music for that? Yeah, and this is where the music starts. <laughs> <laughs> He's, uh, <laughs> Don't worry. Hillary, <laughs> oh for two, yeah. <laughs> All right.